Wine! 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 More wine! Oh, <laughs> hey, how you doing? My name's Topher and welcome to my little wine show. You know, a number of years ago, we decided to do an episode about fine German Riesling wine. Now, I've always enjoyed an occasional Riesling, but I really didn't know that much about it. Now, when I started doing this research many bottles ago, uh, my intent was to be able to share with you a bunch of information concerning Riesling wine and encourage you to get out there and give it a shot. You're probably one of those guys who insists on driving a fine German automobile, but is scared to order a bottle of Riesling. I don't get it. Germany. All right. Let me tell you what I do know so far, and it's a pretty good place to start. Did you know that until the 20th century, there were only two great wine producing countries in the world? France, and surprise, Germany. Now Germany's location at the northernmost extreme of where grapes can even ripen at all is another reason why most people just don't associate Germany with vineyards. And these vineyards are old, like really old, that date back to like the ancient Romans and later in the Middle Ages, monks used to tend to the vineyards. I mean, these things got some history. Riesling grapes are what Germany is famous for. It's what they do best. They're never mixed with any other grapes and they are delicious. There's all sorts of things to know about this, from deciphering these German labels to degrees of sweetness and dryness and when they harvest and everything, and it's overwhelming. You know, I'm man enough to admit to you that I think I might have gotten in over my head on this subject. I mean, it's a great subject, but it is way more involved than I ever thought it would be, and I'm starting to think you need to be a genius to figure it out. We'll get through it. I don't know. I'm just tired, and I could use some help. Dr. Albert Weinstein is known for his knowledge of many things. German wine, and particularly fine German Rieslings, can now be counted among them. This lush and humble genius that highly preferred not used during this lucid hallucinatory visit had plenty and more to share on the subject. Part scientific, part historic, part romantic, and part nonsense, his information and passion for the versatile German Riesling grape proved infectious and inevitably invaluable when it came time to present this very special episode. Let's listen in. Wow, Dr. Weinstein, I'm so honored. You can call me Al. Thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of my dream sequence. What do you want to know? Al, tell me about Germany and its special vineyards. The German word for vineyard is Weinberg. What's a berg? Berg is a hill. What is wine? It's a vineyard. It's wine grows on the hill. If you're walking past the hill and you don't see any vineyards, you're on the north side. Because all the vineyards in Germany are on the south side where the sun hits them, makes the grapes grow nice and plump. I've been doing a lot of research about German Riesling wines, and I'm completely overwhelmed. I want to talk about it because they really seem to be gaining a lot of popularity. You know, the German Riesling has become a secret among the inner sanctum of the wine world. I know, and I'd really like to encourage more people to try it, but I'm finding it kind of intimidating. I'm a little overwhelmed because there's so many different kinds, and there's so many German words on these things. I haven't slept, I haven't eaten, the show is taking me forever to finish. You got that right! And all I want to do is try to explain to people how they can find a German Riesling that they would really like. Well, it's easy to spot a Riesling because it comes in these long, beautiful bottles. I know that much, but what do I tell someone who insists on not trying it because they think all German Riesling wines are way too sweet? <coughs> You're wrong! All Riesling wine is not sweet! They make a nice dry wine as well. They make wine that's sometimes so dry it'll make your tongue go I'll tell you it's... But if you're looking for a well-balanced, sweet wine, you're in luck. I know, Al. But what's behind this dirty rumor? Oh, I'm going to tell you. This all happened during World War II, when the German winemakers were very astute and observant, and they noticed the American GI had a sweet tooth, they would drink Coca-Cola and they had chocolate bars. So the winemaker said, hey, let's make our wine sweet and they'll buy a lot of it and they'll drink a lot of it. And that's what happened. And then the American GI comes home and he thinks, all right, all the wine is sweet. Now that I didn't know and it makes a lot of sense. Oh, let me tell you something. The poor Germans like this too because you know they have a lot of sugar ration over there. They got nothing sweet to suck on. So they made the German wine sweet and the German people said, I like that too. All right. 
So then where do I begin when trying to help someone choose a German Riesling that they'd really love? Two things must be taken into consideration. Number one is ripeness. Number two is sweetness. Ripeness is under nature's control. Sweetness, that's under the winemaker's control. Now, sweetness is measured in two categories, trocken und halbtrocken, bone dry and whoop de doo And on every bottle of Riesling wine in Germany, there's an indication as to the sweetness or the dryness, so you can think before you drink. I know, but can you please help me explain the terminology that distinguishes the seemingly endless varieties of German Riesling wine? You know, the German law is very strict on the wine that we put in the bottle. And you look on the label, you'll see QMP. If you don't see QMP, you're not in Germany. I know, QMP or sometimes VDP. It basically means quality wine with specific attributes. It's top quality wine from Germany. But what about all the other words I see on these fancy labels? Ah, you picked a very difficult subject, my friend, talking about the reasoning wine because it comes in six different levels of dryness, from that very, very dry to that very sweet ice wine which is my particular favorite. Ah, break it down, Al. Now, the first one on the QMP list is usually the driest, and it's called the Cabernet. Going up the scale on the QMP is the Ausschließ. It's uh, very lush with a little bit more sweetness there. The next one on the QMP list, taken from fully ripened grapes, a little bit sweeter is the Spatlis. Goes great with a schnitzel. Going up the scale on the QMP list is the Birrenauschlis. Very rare, and very expensive, and very good. German words are hard to pronounce, even for me. Don't get caught up with the pronunciation. If you look at it, you taste it, you like it, drink it, it's good. Who cares what? Gutzapula. Oh, next one is the Trockenbeerenauschlis. Oh, getting up there. It's the richest, sweetest, rarest, most expensive Riesling wine we're going to talk about today. Made from these grapes that are so shriveled up and dried, almost look like little raisins. You know, in Germany, a lot of the grape pickers are little old ladies. They're walking up a steep hill. They're picking a grape one at a time, putting them in a bucket over there for you to make a bottle of wine. It's going to be expensive, but good. Well, now we come to Dr. Weinstein's favorite wine, ice wine. Well, why did they call it ice wine? I'm going to tell you. Because the same little old ladies get up a little bit earlier in the morning, and they go out and pick the grapes while they're still frozen. And in order to keep the grapes still frozen, they put gloves on and they make this wonderful ice wine which comes in these cute little bottles. I wish I had one here to show you because I would drink some. All right, let me get this straight. So these ambitious German winemakers harvest their Riesling grapes at six different intervals during the season, which results in six different varieties of wine. And that's what we're talking about here when we look at these QMP scales and the dryness and the sweetness. And I think... Um... Alpha, do what I do. The scientific method, you experiment, start in the middle. If it's a little too sweet, you want to go a little drier. If it's a little too dry, you want to go a little bit sweeter. You'll figure out the one you want. It's not rocket science. You know, Rieslings are often thought of only as a dessert wine, but that's not true. They'll go great with anything from a strudel to a schnitzel. So Tova, let me tell you something. The ladies like the Riesling. Tova, don't let this thing overwhelm you. Because it's easy. All you got to do is learn a little bit about these wines, and people will think you're a genius. Al, thank you. I owe you one. I think I got this. See you later. <laughs> Snap out of it, Topher. It's just wine. <laughs> Whoa. I got to lay off that Stilton cheese. Al's right. You just pick one. You start somewhere, and you go in the direction that pleases you most. And no matter what you pick, it is going to be a quality wine. These Germans take it very seriously, and they got guts. They risk losing their entire crop by harvesting this little Riesling grape at six different intervals that results in six different styles of wine. It's just up to you to pick the one you want. Next time you're in a restaurant and you order a German Riesling off the wine menu, you're bound to impress somebody. But you know what's going to do the most impressing? the wine itself. You're going to be pleasantly surprised. Wow. I think that's the end of the episode. I think this one kind of finished itself. I can't tell you how relieved I am. This is fantastic. He knows wine. Wine! 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 More wine! Wine! Wine!
No, Al spoke the truth. This wine does go great with a nice schnitzel, but it also lends itself to all sorts of food pairings. It's light, it's aromatic, it's never aged in oak barrels, so it really lends itself to just about anything you could think of. And in its sweeter form, it goes good with spicier foods. Like what? Like spicy schnitzel. Wine! 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 More wine! 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 More wine! 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 More wine! More wine, please!